Hello friends. Uh, it's been a while and I apologize for that. I feel like I ghosted you and I totally didn't mean to. <laughs> Between work and kids schedules and craziness of life, it's just been crazy busy. Uh, good crazy busy, but crazy busy. Um, but I wanted to pop in today because it's World Diabetes Day. And that's something that I always acknowledge. Um, it just really struck a chord with me this year because in my Facebook memories, um, a post that I made four years ago to commemorate, celebrate, whatever you want, it's not really celebrate, but acknowledge um, World Diabetes Day. Um, it was a picture of me in blue because blue is the color for diabetes awareness um, and it was basically just you know wearing blue for for World Diabetes Day but I looked at myself four years ago I hadn't been diagnosed correctly at that point and I thought my gosh I look like a skeleton <laughs> and I didn't realize how sick I was um, and that was kind of hard to see and you know here I am four years later diagnosed and well controlled and doing all the things that I'm supposed to be doing but it's scary how bad it was I guess um, and how easy it is to let it get that bad because you don't realize I think um, so I know that I've gone over or I have not so much gone over. Um, sorry, putting my teacher shoes on, but <laughs> um, I know I've talked about my how I was diagnosed story. Um, so I don't I don't want to dive back into all of that, but just a couple different parts of it um, that have really been resonating with me the last week or so as I've kind of thought about this. Um, so I, at the time, had a one-year-old, not quite one-year-old, and a three-year-old. So I was crazy busy, like exhausted, crazy, you know, just insane. Um, and I'd had gestational diabetes with both of my kids and been fine. My kids were both fine, no issues, no complications, no NICU stays. Um, thank goodness, no issues. Um, but I had stayed pre-diabetic after both births. Um, and after my second, I remained pre-diabetic and my A1C just kept going up. No matter what I did, I completely cut sugar out of my diet as much as I could. I couldn't do it completely because it, I mean, it's in everything. Let's be serious. But I, I cut it out as much as I could. I actually realized that, um, just having a cookie, having something with straight sugar in it would give me panic attacks because I would have such a sharp spike. So I, I just completely cut it out and my carbs were very, very, very limited. I was doing 30 eating, I was eating 30 grams of carbs at meals and then 15 for snacks. That's what I was allowing myself. It was the diet that they'd had me on while I was pregnant. And I was exercising, I was running or walking like 15, 20 miles a week. I was, pr I was doing all the things that my doctor told me to do. I was proud of myself and I still felt like crap a lot, like almost every day. And I went to specialists. I did go to an endocrinologist. Um, that particular endocrinologist, I went within the first six months of being diagnosed. And she looked at all of the blood work that my doctor had done, which was pretty recent, and looked at the medication that I was on, looked at what I was doing. We talked about everything that I was doing and all of it. And she pretty much said, yeah, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. I agree with what your doctor has told you to do. Just keep going. And then talked about carb counting. And I thought, okay, well, I have a one-year-old and a three-year-old and I drove an hour to see you. 
And I'd much rather go to my regular doctor who's only five minutes because I have little kids. So I didn't, I never went back to that endocrinologist and I just kept going to my regular doctor. But all of a sudden I needed specialists for my stomach because my stomach was bothering me all the time. And I eventually needed a surgeon because one of the doctors was convinced that it was my gallbladder, so they took it out. Um, and it was just three years of this, of nobody being able to tell me what the heck was wrong with me. And they knew that I, that I had diabetes, they just were treating me like a type 2, because that's what they assumed was what I had. And I had absolutely no way to control my blood sugar. If, it, if I ate something and it went high, I had no way of bringing it down. I just felt disgusting. Um, and I, I just kind of had a roller coaster every day. And most days I would do my best to, you know, have a fun day with the kids and everything. I was blessed enough to be a stay-at-home mom. Um, and, you know, we'd play, we'd go to the playgrounds, we'd do all those kinds of things. And I would cover it up as much as I could, as best as I could. But by the, hus by the time my husband got home from work, I was done. And I would just lock myself in the bedroom and lie down and just feel disgusting. Um, for reference, just to give you an idea of what I felt like, there was actually one incident where we went to a friend's birthday party. I wasn't feeling great. I assumed it was my blood sugar because it's always my blood sugar, <laughs> right? Um, and there what just there wasn't a whole lot of food there that I could eat. It was a lot of stuff that had sugar or a lot of carbs or things like that. So I assumed that my blood sugar was low. Should have checked, didn't check. And when we got home, I made myself a big salad. You know, put meat in it, avocado, like nice big healthy salad and I felt like crap but I forced myself to eat it because I assumed that my blood sugar was the problem that was how I always felt like crap and two hours later it turned out that I had a stomach bug um yeah that went well but but I mean for reference I felt like I had a stomach bug pretty much every day for three years I couldn't tell the difference So finally, uh, I did a little bit of researching and found out about LADA, which is latent autoimmune diabetes in adults. It's essentially type 1, but it's a slow onset and it comes on when you're an adult. And I asked my doctor about it. I said, I want to be tested. All of the things that I've found, it sounds like me. And she said to me, I completely agree and I do think that you have it, but I don't think you're emotionally ready for insulin just yet. And I said, okay, thank you, and hung up the phone and then immediately called my friend who was a type one and had recommended her endocrinologist to me and said to her, I'd really like your doctor's number now. <laughs> and I went to see him. Um, and he is still my endocrinologist. He is fabulous. He fixed me. He figured out what was wrong. It, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't rocket science. It was a matter of blood work and tests and figuring out that I'm not type two, I'm type one. And my pancreas was not working and still is not working. And I need insulin. End of story. And it sucks. It really does. But since then, I feel normal most of the time. I actually have been able to go back to work. I'm in my second year teaching again. Um, I mean, there's no way that I could have done this before. I couldn't get through an entire day of teaching kindergartners uh, the way that I was feeling before. There's no way. And I can do it now. And I'm going to toot my own horn for a second and say, I'm good at it too. <laughs> I trust your gut. I knew that there was something off. I knew that it wasn't right. Advocate for yourself.
even if it means fighting with your doctors, even if it means going to find a different doctor, because doctors can be wrong. They're human. It just is. They can be wrong. They can make mistakes. They can miss things. And it, the thing that they're missing could be a really big deal. It could be, it could be what makes you feel better. It could be what cures you. So advocate for yourself. So my thought process behind all of this, um, is that type one typically comes on because of some kind of trauma to the body. So like an illness or it could be, it could be like an actual trauma, like a car accident, something like that. But it's typically something that seems really benign. You get pneumonia, not You know, that is a big deal, but, um, you just, you get sick and those cells in your body that have been there the whole time waiting for a reason to attack you go, oh my gosh, there's something wrong and start attacking whatever it is that's wrong. And when they're finished attacking whatever it is that's wrong, they start attacking part of your body. And for me, that was pregnancy. Pregnancy was the trauma that triggered it. And I want to be very clear. I would do, knowing the results, knowing how everything would turn out, I would do it again, both times in a heartbeat. I would never take that back. I would never change that. I will live on insulin happily for the rest of my life with my two children. No question. But that's what did it for me. Um, And with so many people getting COVID, I'm kind of partially wondering, will there be people who this wakes it up in their bodies? And I'm not trying to start a debate, so please don't blow up my comments. It's just a thought that I've had. So yeah, it's possible that there's going to be a lot more type ones out there in the coming years because their body goes through a trauma and attacks it and then attacks them. And unfortunately, that's how it works. So my, I guess my big takeaway today, this feels like a very negative, like, hey, I'm back. Um, Sorry. Um, My big takeaway today is diabetes is not a death sentence. It's just, it's not. It's not, it's not shackling you to your home, to your, to a hospital, to your doctor's office, to anything. I mean, a little bit to insulin, but you know, that's an easy thing to bring along with you. There are so many ways of making it so much more simple to manage. Omnipod, uh, I love my Omnipod, my insulin pump. I love my Libre 2 CGM. Um, although technically it's not a CGM, it's still a flash glucose monitor, but whatever. Um, there's just so many things now that make it easier. So if it turns out that this is something that comes down comes up down the road for you, it's okay. You can handle it. And no matter what, if there's something wrong, advocate for yourself a thousand times over because you know, you know how your body feels. You know how you're supposed to feel. And your, your doctor's going off of tests. They're, I'm sure, doing their very best to help you. But they don't know everything as much as some would like to say that they do. They don't. It took three years, many specialists, and finally going to the right specialist to figure out what was wrong with me. And it was a pretty simple thing. And it also took 
leaving the doctor who thought she knew better for me than I did and not running a test that she knew would come back positive because she didn't think I was ready for it. I'm tougher than she thinks, than she thought. And I'm proud of myself for that. So, you are tougher than you think. You can handle it. Whatever it is, fight for what you need. And I, I want to say Happy World Diabetes Day, but no, I'm not happy about that. <laughs> Just on National Diabetes Day, Just keep in mind that we're typical. We're fighting an invisible, horrible, exhausting illness. And it sucks. It really, really does. But it's not a disability. And if you knew what we go through on a daily basis, you would know how incredibly strong we are, even if we don't look it. So, to my fellow diabetics out there, keep being those badasses that you are. <laughs> and if you have any questions or would like to reach out, please feel free to do so in the comments. And make sure to like and subscribe. I promise not to ghost you for so long next time. <laughs> Have a great day.